This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar presenting advanced features in Adobe Premiere Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. Inside Premiere, you cannot take a second clip like a piece of text and move it as an object in a different clip moves. For instance, I couldn't have a red arrow pointing to our running girl and have the red arrow move as the girl is dashing about the frame. That requires After Effects. What I can do in Premiere is that I can take a single effect, for instance, a lighting effect, a, a color grade, um, making something transparent, and track that. For instance, here, I want to put a mask on the girl so we only see the girl, say, waist up, running through the snow. To do that, we're going to go to Effect Controls, and I'm going to click this icon right here. I can add a circular shape or a rectangular shape or a freehand shape. I'm going to work with an oval and put it on top of the girl, right about like that. Now, you would think that when we track this, everything is going to be hunky-dory. You'd think that, but you'd be wrong. To track, notice that my playhead is at the very beginning of the clip. I'll do one where it's in the middle in just a minute, but I'm starting at the beginning. This arrow allows me to track forward. This arrow allows me to track back, and this allows me to track one frame at a time. Let's track forward and watch the arrow. By the way, see here where preview is checked? Live preview is turned on. Live preview allows you to monitor the track as it's being created. If you have a recent computer, you can leave this on. There's not a big hit. But if you turn off live preview, tracking happens a whole lot faster, but you won't know if it's gone off the rails until after you look at it when the track is complete. Because it's you and I together working on this, I'm going to leave live preview on so you can see what happens. We can also adjust the track based upon the position, the scale, and the rotation of the object. Well, she doesn't rotate, so we can turn that off. So I'm just going to just track based upon position. And click the right tracking arrow. Here we go. Click. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's happening? What's happening? It's that background tree. I have no idea why Premiere thinks that tree is so fascinating, but I spent three hours yesterday in rehearsal trying a whole variety of different things to get Premiere to concentrate on the girl and not the tree, but it fell in love with the tree time after time after time. To get rid of this, I can click here, see the stopwatch icon. That gets rid of all the keyframes, and let's just try this again. So let's select the mask. And let's put it over the girl. Let's put our playhead back at the beginning. There we go. Back at the beginning. And let's make it smaller. And just see if we can get this just to focus on her face and ignore the tree. And now we're at the beginning. We'll click track. And notice now, when I get rid of everything in the background, I can track based on her face until it starts to see that tree, and then it's going to start to flake on the tree again. Okay, good. Now we'll just watch it play back. Now, this has is, this is made everything in the frame transparent except that circle around her head. What happens if, let's just try and experiment as long as we're here. Let's expand the mask. Let's add some feathering. So now I can see, but I can't change the framing, I don't think. Let's just try the framing. Pull that down so I see more of her. Let's see if we can try that. Notice that my frame didn't change. There we go. Try that. So I can make the mask bigger, but I can't change the frame. That flash is because I pulled the frame down in the middle of the clip. All right, well, let's try something different here. This is some footage from John Gay shooting an air show. Select the clip. And what I want to do is I want to highlight this plane. To do that, I'll hold the Option key down and drag to select the top clip. With the top clip selected, we'll go to Opacity, and we'll apply a, f a circle right about here 
to this plane. And there's good separation between the plane and the background. And I will click track. And look at that. In every case, in every case of all the times I've run this, it thinks the background, not the plane. I have no idea why. <sighs> all right, well, let's try something different. This is me at BVE in 2014. I brought a camera, but I forgot to bring a light. I need to fix this. So I'm going to select my clip. We'll go to the Lumetri panel. Where's color? Right there. Go to the Lumetri panel, and I'm going to just tweak a setting here, which then applies the Lumetri panel over here in the effect controls. Apply a oval. Put it on my face. Pull the edges in. Rotate it by clicking outside the edge of the mask, right about there. Pull it down, make it a little bit bigger. Give me a little bit of feathering. A little bit bigger yet, so I get more of my face in there. Okay, the complete 100% effect is right there. The feathering indicates how it shades off to nothing. How am I going to correct this? I'm going to pull the exposure up a lot, but when you do that, I lose a lot of the color saturation. So I'll pull the saturation up to give my face some life again. And we'll make the circles under my eyes disappear by pulling contrast down. And we'll just make that a little bit darker, right about there. And now it looks like I've got better lighting on me. It would be better to have brought a light, but at least I can fix it. Okay, so now we're going to track forward. So go down to Lumetri, click here, click the forward track. Notice I'm already outside the, the radius. It's not paying attention to the movement of my head. Now let's go back to Shift-Command-M. Go back to here, and now I'm going to track and reverse. And now things go completely off the rails. I have no idea why it's finding the background as opposed to foreground. So what I have to do instead is notice here I've got all these keyframes. The light should not be panning as I'm moving. So let's get rid of the keyframes. Say get rid of the keyframes. And let's jump to the marker. No, not that wrong. Moose breath. Let's go back to edit. Let's go to the marker. There we go. And this time I'm going to select the mask. And let's just right there. Pull the mask right there. I'm going to set a keyframe for the, let's see, for the mask path. So we'll turn keyframes on. And we've now set a keyframe. I'm going to go back to the beginning and select the mask. And because I already have a keyframe set for the path, it will set a second keyframe just by having me move it. And now we'll have it. I'm using the arrow key to move. I'm going to pull that ahead just a bit. And now it, it hits that second keyframe position, and the light doesn't move, and I just move inside the light. So the workaround, obviously, is to set keyframes manually. But what surprises me is in how many instances, and I must have tried six different clips, how many instances Premiere failed to do tracking and getting focused on the background, not on the foreground. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar presenting advanced features in Adobe Premiere Pro. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 345. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. 
Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software, and we update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.